yet remain standing. Let's thank God. Amen for Lady Campbell. Come on, where you at tonight? Thank God for my great and wonderful pastor, Archbishop Eric Thank you. 
praise the Lord. Amen. And I love my pastor. Amen. So because he is here, amen, that means that half of my job is done. Because he helps me get through this. Can the church say praise the Lord? Get your Bibles quickly. Just one verse in your hearing. It is in the book of 1 Chronicles. Amen. Pastor Butler texted me and told me there was no need for me to come. Amen. He said there was no need for me to come because I do this because I love him. Can the church say amen? He told me there was no need for you to come or to show up. Amen. Because everything that was, amen, nailed down has been resurrected. <laughs> I texted him back and said, Pastor Campbell, I, I knew Pastor Campbell before you did. Can the church say praise the Lord? Amen. My spot is secure. I'm not even worried. Amen. So I thank God. I've been here all five years. This is your first year, brother. I've been here all five. Can the church say amen? And thank God for Bishop Butler, my friend and brother, who has set the tone and certainly, amen, one of the greatest friends that I know, Pastor Overseer, designate Cotter. We'll be here on Sunday. And then, of course, amen, the closer, amen, Bishop Hill. Amen. You got some lineup, brother. Amen. So we're grateful. It is in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 29. It acts that you would rest on your feet in respect to the word of the Lord. For if you stand for the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord will stand for you. Amen. I am so intrigued by your theme tonight. Amen. And so I'm thankful and grateful. Just want to, amen, drop this and then move on. Thank you again, Zion, for those who have responded to the clarion call. Amen. amen. And I'm appreciative, amen. amen, that I've got some back up from the Bronx. Hey, the church said amen. amen. It is in First Chronicles 29, verse number 5. That latter clause of verse number five, when you have it, say, I've got the word. Amen. That's the latter clause of verse number five in chapter 29 of the book of First Chronicles. It asks a question. It says, and who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Would you be kind enough and repeat it after me? And who, and who is, willing is willing to consecrate, to consecrate his, service his service this day, this day unto, the unto the Lord? I want to talk to you for a few moments from the subject, the grace to still be willing. Oh, Look at your neighbor and grab a neighbor by the hand and tell them the grace. The grace. To still be willing. You can have your seat. This evening we gathered to celebrate the fifth pastoral anniversary of my friend and my brother, your pastor, Jeffrey Maurice Campbell. What an awesome opportunity has been afforded to all of us to honor one of God's choice servants. Let me pause first and thank the anniversary committee and certainly this pastor for the privilege of allowing me to serve amen for all five years of this celebration. I do not count it robbery but I certainly count it a privilege to serve in this capacity because one thing we need in this life is consistency. It is with great gratitude, my brothers and sisters, that I want to thank God and highlight, amen, Lady Maris Campbell, amen, my wife's birthday twin, and my sister, who has often, amen, offered sacrifice and support that complements this pastor's character and his commitment to ministry. As I am on the verge, amen, crossover of celebrating seven years of pastoring in March 2024, I realize that anniversaries are not just about showing seeds. It's not about just sharing sentiments or having, amen, consecutive services, but these types 
types of moments are occasions that are a powerful source of encouragement and enrichment that add years to the heart and the life and the spirit of the pastor. I do not want you to think that your presence here tonight is in vain because the month of October is highlighted as clergy appreciation month. While this well-deserved appreciation is timely in this critical and crucial season of the church because we are all coming off the trauma and the trauma of a three-year pandemic, some people are still reluctant to come to church. They don't want to attend worship services in person and they have exchanged conviction for convenience. I got the witness here and they're now substituting confession for comfortability. Pastors are exalt, exalt, uh, exalted, amen, exhausted, excuse me. Pulpits are exposed and people are extinct. And in addition to all of the stuff that is going on in our life, it is enough to train you because they have selected Clergy Appreciation Month in the same month as people celebrate Halloween. Oh, this job is not for the timid. I got no witness here. It does involve daily demonic attacks from the Freddy Kruegers on the vegan war. I got no witness here. From the weekly turmoil of the Jason Boys on the trustee board and the monthly madness of the Michael Myers in the culinary ministry. But I want to share with you that not only you have to deal with gremlins and goblins and ghosts, but the devil has a target on the bullseye life of the pastor. And that's why it's important, my brothers and sisters, that you pray for your pastor. But Paul said it like this, we wrestle not, I got the witness, against flesh and blood, but against the powers, amen, of the rulers of darkness of this world. But I need about 10 people that will jump up and say, thank God for my pastor. I'm looking for someone who has witnessed the transformation these last five years that can testify that crossover is in better hands since we crossed paths with a man called Jeffrey Campbell. Growing up, they used to have a soup. I got no witness here called Campbell's Soup. And if you know that this man has made an impact in your life, you ought to scream in here. Good. Thank God for a good word. Thank God for a good leader. Thank God for a good husband. Thank God for a good leader. Somebody ought to shout. of your founder, hallelujah, of over 30 years, Reverend Garland Harrison. God was ever mindful of his ministry, not to leave the church, amen, by the wayside. Shake the neighbor's hand and tell him God is going to look out for his church. Oh, you didn't shake the neighbor's hand. I said shake him and tell him God is going to for his church because I once was young. It's what I mean. I, I once was younger, but now I'm a little older. But I've never seen, I wish I had a witness, the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. This man that God has allowed you to see as your leader is not a fly by night. He is not a Johnny come lately, uh -huh. but he is a man uh, that has not only a man his own family, uh -huh, but he's also willing. Uh, look at your name and tell me 
He's also willing uh, to take on the house of God. Uh, been married 34 years. Happy anniversary. Uh, oh, praise the name of our God. Uh, been working for transit. Uh, and now God has entrusted him. Uh, because how can you not take care uh, uh, hallelujah, of God's house uh, and leave your own house uh, vacant? Uh, because we have a lot of people uh, that's got Oh, I got no witness in here. Shake a neighbor's hand and tell a neighbor. I don't want to have an A in church. And you didn't shake nobody's hand. Tell them I don't want to have an A in church. And have an F in my family. I want God to be proud of me. And when people call my name, I want to be able to say it for man's ways. to open up your mouth and tell God know what I need. Uh, so Paul encourages us and said, my God shall supply all of my needs. I need you to open up your mouth if you need a miracle before November and shout all of my needs to me. You can jump up. You need to jump up and shout and say all of my needs are met. Go find somebody and encourage them in the Holy Ghost of a church may sometime decrease. It may diminish. It may dwindle. But with Pastor Campbell's arrival, the bond between pastor and people is more steadier and have proved all of the doubters wrong. Campbell, may I share with you that I marvel your work ethic. Because these five years, you are a proactive leader, striving to bridge the gap between the church and the community. Look, look what he's done. He's, he's implemented initiatives like Sunday morning a virtual church, Wednesday inspirational talk, I got no witness here, and prayer, community day, and then we outside. Look at your neighbor and tell somebody, we outside. Those were services that were designed to bring the church into the community. These innovative activities show that you did not just come to occupy the seat, but you came to create an opportunity for every member and crossover family. Look at your neighbor and tell somebody, God is giving me an opportunity. Oh, you didn't tell nobody. I said, shake somebody hand and tell them, God is giving me an opportunity. And I thank God because now that I got an opportunity, I can lift my hands and say, I'm stronger. Come on here. I am wiser. And I am better. I find somebody and tell them, neighbor, I got to make the best of my opportunity. So please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. The text that arrests our attention tonight comes from the book of First Chronicles. Chronicles is a book that creates a timeline of events, which is extremely important when it comes to the history and God keeping a record. Would you tell somebody God keeps a record? Hallelujah that God, you didn't tell nobody. I said, tell somebody God is keeping a record. And there's a few of us tonight that said, I'll watch it on virtual. I'll miss out and just come on Sunday. But I want to tell the 25 of you that pressed your way, God has a miracle with your name on it. Because he keeps a record. You could have stayed home with your broken heart. You could have stayed home with 
want money being funny. Uh -huh. But I look at your neighbor and tell them I press my way. Uh -huh. I need to find out that there are 15 people that have testified I press my way tonight. Uh -huh. I wasn't feeling my best, uh -huh. but I press my way. Uh -huh. Everything wasn't the way I wanted it to be, uh -huh. but I press my way. Uh -huh. My children are acting crazy, uh -huh. but I press my way. Uh -huh. But I press my way. It is important to know that First Chronicles gives us a pastoral message, and it gives comfort and hope to generations for God's people. Chronicles is an interesting book. Praise the name of our God because it gives the intriguing story of King David. It gives a full description of the plans for the temple and how David gave instructions to the priests. He desired that everybody would serve God properly. I need you to go find somebody and look them in the eye and tell them you can't serve God any kind of way. Oh, praise the name of our God. See, I sense in my spirit that there is a sense of apathy and complacency and laziness that have crept in the amen, the crevices of our church culture. We have lost our eagerness to serve because we have now gained enormous egos to be served. And now we are not satisfied. About the any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. That used to be enough for the church, but now people are sitting back, jealous of one another, envious of one another, and now they're saying, God, what have you done for me lately? But when I was growing up, they used to tell me that the best way to get more from where it came from is to say thank you. And some people are so concerned about what they don't have that they haven't praised them, that they didn't die in COVID, that they're not on a ventilator, that they're not on a respirator. You ought to jump up on your feet and courage God and praise God and say, God, it could have been me. Outdoors with no food and no clothes. All alone without one friend. Just another number would have tried to get but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Every day by your power you keep on keeping me. Somebody in crossover. Somebody from the Zion ought to open up your mouth and say thank you Lord for all you have done with me. David declares to us to serve the Lord with gladness. And may I share with you that it is a passionate plea to keep your mind on God. Yes, we've been offended. Yes, we've been taken advantage of. But grab somebody by the hand and tell a neighbor, whatever, you didn't grab nobody. I said, grab a neighbor by the hand and tell a neighbor, I got to tell you something. Whatever has been done to you, shake them and tell them, whatever has been done to you does not compare to what he's done for you. Can I preach like I feel? Be aware of the state of the church. Our pastors are attached with calling the congregation to find out who's on the Lord's side. When I was 16 years old, my pastor told me, go out there and find out who's on the Lord's side. But Ezra tonight, and choirs of crossover on this Friday night, in the midst of this 
question and who then is willing to consecrate his service unto the Lord may I share with you that before you allow yourself to think that this is just another demand that is added to your plate I need to let you know that before you answer that your response will determine your reward would you tell 